Welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara Green. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Ava Vidal and Sean Walsh, Chris Addison, Hugh Dennis and Stuart Francis. We start with a round call headliners. Here's a picture of the Prime Minister and Deputy Prime Minister. What does GUPC stand for? Is it uh, one of uh, Cameron's uh, favourite fantasies? Girls, uniforms, patients, Clegg. <laughs> does, it, does it, in fact, geneticists unveil pointless clone? <laughs> is, um, <laughs> is it Cameron ordering lunch? Is it uh, goose, ugly fruit, pheasant? And a Coke. <laughs> Is it gormless underachievers, punished country? <laughs> it doesn't look like uh, Anton Deck have just delivered a baby. <laughs> <laughs> That is not what you'd want, is it? That's not no. when you're in that when you're there, ready and suddenly. Hey! Yeah. Uh, <laughs> boy, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I, is it Gay Union Parade, Cameron? <laughs> <laughs> is it uh, Cameron's thinking gloves unnecessary for prostate check? <laughs> In fact, genuinely unfunny photo caption. So, in many ways, they all are. Uh, <laughs> in fact, government U turns provoke criticism. Very good, thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. Yes, the answer I was looking for was government U-turns provoke criticism. This is the news that a string of U-turns, including this week's reversal on sentencing, have brought the coalition government fresh criticism from both the public and within the Tory party. A YouGov poll for the Sunday Times this week said 43% of voters fear the government is losing its way. What have the government changed their minds about? The one this week is uh, rubbish collection. They said that there would be rubbish collection once a week, and now they've gone back on that. It's going to be um, once a fortnight. I've absolutely no idea why people are worried about their bins being taken away every week, because if you live in a city, a fox will take your bin away every night. <laughs> <if> you... <laughs> well, this is the thing, it's a, a big thing, the uh, urban foxes, or as they have them in Kensington, the urbane foxes. <laughs> <laughs> so I said to the rabbit, I should run if I were you, my own friend. Do not say to bandy pretty words with me, I shall have your pelt for a smoking jacket. <laughs> There's a man who announced his policy, though, a man by the name of Eric, Eric Pickles, Pickles yes. who basically <laughs> said he said it was the right of every Englishman to have the remnants of his chicken tikka masala to be able to put them in a bin without having to wait two weeks to have them collected. Hmm. Have you seen the look of that man? That is a... How would he know? There we go. <laughs> that is a man who has no concept of leftovers whatsoever. <laughs> Do you think that when he said the remnants, he meant like that tin container? Uh, it was it was that they got delivered in. Yeah. Honestly, is... he would have eaten that. He would have eaten the bag it came in. <laughs> he would have eaten the receipt and the leaflet with the new menu on it. <laughs> and the delivery boy only got away because he was on a moped. <laughs> An Indian takeaway, you don't put in a bin anyway. Indian takeaway, you put in the bag that you got the Indian takeaway in, and then you put that next to the bin. <laughs> we don't actually put it in the bin, so it doesn't matter. And what, it surely it gets in the bin eventually. Surely the, the bag that the takeaway arrived in that contains the ticket, where does that go? I really need to clean my house. <laughs> <laughs> do, the, do the foxes actually ring your doorbell and go, can we just, can we just come in? Because uh, <laughs> you can smell <laughs> under the door that Please. this is going to be great. Can we just... <laughs> just you just walk, leave, leave for an hour. Uh, <laughs> I think thinking of kicking me out. <laughs> It is also one of the big advantages of a wheelie bin that you can do a U-turn in it. <laughs> I didn't and racing. See. Have you ever done that? You ever done I've... racing wheelie bins? No, I haven't. Well, you put a child in each wheelie bin. <laughs> <laughs> they're, quite, they're quite deep wheelie bins. How yeah, old are exactly. They... Yeah, they don't need to be seeing anything. You can, have... <laughs> you can have the lids closed. Do you even have to move, or do you just close the lid and go? Oh, here we go. Oh. <laughs> and when they're sick, it's quite useful. They're in a bin, to be honest. <laughs> By the way, this is all a very funny chat about wheelie bins, but we're not saying you should really put children into a wheelie bin. <laughs> what else? What else? So, so we've got bins. What was the um, uh, and the nursery milk? That was what another was the one. Nursery milk. Nursery, nursery milk. milk scheme went tits up. Yeah. That went tits up. <laughs> 
What else has been sentencing? Sentencing. Uh, yeah. Sentencing. Yeah. Uh, Kenneth Clark has had to. He he was going to give us a twofer on sentencing. If you play, if you pleaded guilty, you're going to get fifty percent off your uh, sentence. Which it's a good thing there's no death penalty in this country because how is that going to work? I sentence you to half death, <laughs> half life. <laughs> you're going to have to go and live in Leicester. <laughs> Sort of Daily Mail readers and stuff who get very upset about the fact that they're not sentencing people to long enough in prison. I mean, I've never worked in a prison. No one considers. I used to work in, in a prison. I was a prison officer for five years. And it is very hard to keep those people entertained. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, they get bored. They cause trouble. Do you know what I mean? A lot of them get into religion, which is sweet. Um, <laughs> we so uh, you know when when I had a Jehovah's Witness in, what I'd do is I'd send them around the wing, knocking on everyone else's cell door. <laughs> uh, the best part of that was watching them try to pretend they weren't in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving the notion of whoever the warden is going, how am I going to keep them entertained? <laughs> so we've done, we've done the crowd, I've done juggling, I've done puppet shows. Uh, <laughs> they, they cause a lot of trouble. They, oh, they, they get do. Old. That's why they're in there. <laughs> uh, what did David Cameron announce on Father's Day? He announced that he wanted to people to stigmatise runaway fathers yes. in the same way that we stigmatise drunk drivers. Yes. He said that the best gift his dad ever gave him was optimism. Well, I was a pretty disappointed Christmas. <laughs> and it was was it? Not optimism. I said Next Optimus really Prime. <laughs> Transformer dad. The, uh, the, was it, it was the timeliness of it, like on Father's Day. Is this going to be like, is every major, you know, Hallmark card anniversary, <laughs> is he going to announce another Halloween? My new policy no tricks, just treats. Uh, <laughs> He's, he did say, though, didn't he? He said, basically, his father getting up early mm. and then coming back very late at night, having done a hard day's work, was basically made a profound impression on him. And you're thinking, if you had a little David Cameron, wouldn't you spend a lot of time outside in the car <laughs> smoking, <laughs> waiting for his bedroom <laughs> light to go off? <laughs> Who says, who says, like, that the women want them back in the first place? Has anyone even considered that? It's bad enough being in a long-term relationship. I mean, it's, it's miserable. <laughs> no, honestly, I, I know what I'm talking about. I have kids. It's, it's awful. And I... <laughs> you know, kids just want some peace sometimes, cos me and my ex, we were together a long time. We used to argue all the time. And for a long time, I was like, but if I leave him, he might go out there and meet somebody else and actually be happy. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> so I stayed out of spite. <laughs> It was an unfair attack by David Cameron, really. I mean, he just stigmatised the whole group. Just because you father a child out of wedlock, you run away, take no responsibility for that child and never see them, does not mean that you're not Mayor of London. <laughs> <laughs> there are also lots of points, aren't there, when, when children want their, want their parents to be absent. I mean, I love my parents very much, but for me, that was when, as a teenager, they used to take a cat for a walk on a lead. <laughs> we used to, on holidays, we used to take a cat for a walk on a lead, and it wasn't just a lead, it was a 30-foot washing line. <laughs> didn't you, uh, and didn't all you? of it went over Dartmoor, it went everywhere, this cat. <laughs> and the embarrassing thing was, I got so embarrassed by it that I had to walk, uh, you know, about 100 <laughs> yards behind my parents. And, but that meant that you heard the comments of the people coming past them. <laughs> It is awful, awful for a teenage boy to be subjected to someone going, you see those people with the cat on the lead? I think they may just have been released back into the community. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't your parents have a wheelie bin? They had a wheelie bin. <laughs> <laughs> I spent the first six years of my life in it. it did, you, did you still have washing on the lead? <laughs> no. <laughs> Two birds with one stone, yeah. that'd be fantastic. Yeah. In fact, put a bird on the lead and the cat could have chased it. Yeah. <laughs> and another news. Who is the real power broker? Who's the kingmaker in parking in this country? Is it NCP? No, it's not <laughs> NCP. Who is the one person. single individual who wields more power over parking in this country than anyone else? Boris Johnson. No, it is, according to Parking Review, it's Hugh Dennis. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <sighs> this magazine which was sent to me anonymously. Uh, our guest <laughs> parking features ten separate photographs of Hugh Dennis on its pages at the moment. Yeah, I did the National Parking Awards. <laughs> <laughs> Who wins a National Parking Award? 
they did um, best multi-story. That was in there. It, Have it's... you not done the National Park Awards? I've not done the National Park <laughs> Awards, and I didn't know that this was a bonus of it. I'm going to seek out the National Park Awards. <laughs> yeah, 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 so, what, sorry, when you say parking, do you mean like in a car reversing <laughs> into a slot? <laughs> yeah, is that your talk? Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> they, they had awards, and Hugh handed them out. I handed them out. Yeah. yeah. Well, I gave them all tickets, to be honest. I did. <laughs> <laughs> OK, again, look to the point where the Chris Hughes Award! Now we play a round called Pippa Middleton's Butt of Jokes. <laughs> this game involves Sean, Stuart and Ava, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. I launched a wheel of news, and whoever chooses to start one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. The winner is whoever I think is the funniest. OK. Here we go. The first subject is... Parenting. Who wants to come in on that? Oh. It's, uh, it's quite difficult being a parent. My, my daughter is a, a, she's 17 years old and she's evil and I... <laughs> she, doesn't, she doesn't respect me, I don't know why. And I... This is an example. I came home early one day and I found her smoking on the sofa and I went, my God, you don't even have the respect for me to smoke elsewhere. And she went, so? I went, right, you have to be 18 to buy cigarettes. Where did you get them from? I'm going to report that shopkeeper. She shouldn't have sold them to you because you're a child. And she was like, uh, 17's not a child, yeah? When you're 17, you're supposed to do stuff wrong. Were you perfect when you were 17? I went, well, no, I wasn't. But when I was 17, I like to think I was quite responsible because when I was 17, I was at home each and every night looking after you and your brother. <laughs> Very, very moody as well, you know, like a lot of teen teenage girls, very worried about her body image. She came home one day, she was crying her eyes out, and I went, what's the, what's the matter? And she went, I hate my whole life! And I went, why? And she went, because I'm fat! And I went, well, here you are. <laughs> so, could you at least have the common decency to be jolly? <laughs> OK, let's spin the wheel again. The subject is nightclubs. Who wants to come in on that? Sean. I, uh, I don't go nightclubbing anymore. I, I, I can't do it. I, I never got on with bouncers. I mean, proper nightclub bouncers. You know the ones? The ones that look like a boiled egg on top of a stuffed bin bag. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dara. <laughs> the stupidest questions as well. Like, once I was at a nightclub, it was half one in the morning, I had a traffic cone on my head. <laughs> he said, excuse me, Mike, you step to the side. Have you been drinking? <laughs> a little bit. Of course I have, you idiot. It's a nightclub. It's half one in the morning. What do you think these people are doing? Just walking past, going, oh, dubstep. Let's go and have a look what's going on in here. <laughs> oh! He's not letting me in. I try to become the nicest bloke I can be. I go, come, come, please. You have a lovely head. You have a lovely head. <laughs> if I knew you were going to be here, I would have brought some bread. We could have had some soldiers. <laughs> come on, please. <laughs> we're fine. Honestly, I'm fine. <clears throat> Don't worry about that. <laughs> it's just a hiccup with some pizza in it. It's fine. <laughs> Come back. I understand you have a difficult job. I understand that. It's a difficult job. I take my hat off to you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Charles. OK, that leaves us with Stuart. Let's see what you've been left, Stuart. <laughs> Topic is jobs. Ah, ever since my best friend became a mime, I haven't heard from him. <laughs> <laughs> Still has my leotard. <laughs> At first, I didn't believe my father stole from his job as a lollipop man, but all the signs were there. <laughs> I used to be a panto horse, but I quit while I was ahead. <laughs> I worked in produce, which wasn't exactly rocket salad. <laughs> I used to sell dining room chairs under the table. I worked in China repairing typewriters. I didn't like the job, but I met lots of characters. 
I worked in a sweatshop. It was so-so. <laughs> I started a VD clinic from scratch. <laughs> My topic is jobs. My work is over. <laughs> very good. Thank you very much. Points there goes to Adam Shaw. Maybe you can come back. Next round is called, if this is the answer, what is the question? On the board are six categories. Ava, which category would you like? Foreign news, please. OK, foreign news is the category. The answer is two years. What is the question? How long does a kid stay cute for? <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, in 1990, how long did it take to download one boob? <laughs> uh, is it how long before Prince William goes is it OK if I sleep with your sister? <laughs> <laughs> is it when your Olympic ticket should arrive? <laughs> is it, in fact, if George Osborne was attacked by a crocodile, how long would I be laughing for <laughs> before I called the emergency services? <laughs> is it, how does a Welshman say, two ears? <laughs> Is it how long you should wait after Eric Pickles has been in the toilet? <laughs> <laughs> I'd give it two years if I was you. I'd give it two years. Is it, uh, <laughs> is it how long could a cannibal live off J-Lo's buttocks? <laughs> is it how long would David Blaine have to be dead in a box before anyone noticed? <laughs> Correct answer. Is, Sorry, it, is it something to do with Greece? It is something to do with Greece, yeah. Is it when will the Greek economy go so tits up it may have to leave the euro? That is essentially right. Well done. Thank you very much, Andy <laughs> Yes, the question I was looking for is how long do experts predict it will take before the euro begins to break apart? According to some international financial experts, debt ridden Greece might be forced to abandon the euro as early as 2013 possibly followed by other financially troubled nations, including Ireland and Portugal, with the crisis creating a domino effect and posing a threat to the global economy. Why is the euro under threat? Well, it's, everything's going very badly, isn't it? I mean, Ireland are doing bad. Super insight there, Andy. Yeah, well, I, I, <laughs> you joined I, I, the Newsnight book in, they were, they were calling. <laughs> no, but Ireland are struggling, aren't they? They're struggling so much that we're having to bail them out. You know, apparently we're actually borrowing the money at 3% and we're getting your lot to pay it back at 5%. Yes. So, though, although essentially we are helping you out, we're mucking you over at the same time. <laughs> you actually are making money on the bailout that you're doing for us. We have to pay it back in four years. And we're only going to spend it on your Kit Kats anyway. So, <laughs> thanks, Shane. Did, um, did Ireland join the Eurozone because they thought it was a boy band? <laughs> How did this round, which is about Greece, suddenly and instantly become about Ireland? The reason Greece will never be allowed to fail is it has the largest natural reserves of hummus. <laughs> <laughs> You've cut that pipeline off. The whole Tory party stopped having dinner parties. <laughs> uh, we can't rely on North Sea hummus. <laughs> yeah. It's too oily. <laughs> Scottish hummus is very yeah. harsh. Yeah. <laughs> if the Greeks do default, you know, what are we going to do? We can hardly send the bailiffs in, can we? Because, let's face it, all of the stuff that is value in, you know, <laughs> that the Greeks have, it's already in our British Museum, isn't it? <laughs> what people are saying is, Greece will have to uh, mm. get out of the euro. Is that, is that allowed? Can you just do that? If you run into financial trouble, you can just get rid of the money that you've got. Can I do that? If my bank manager rings me up and goes, you're in terrible debt, I go, sorry, mate, I pulled out the pound. <laughs> uh, yeah, I use milk bottle tops and string now. Uh, <laughs> I'll send you a jiffy bag full. By the way, if you're watching this on Dave, and I know these things run and run and run, Greece is a country that used to exist <laughs> uh, in, <laughs> in the part of Europe now called New South Germany. <laughs> in other news, who's been uh, busy electing a new leader? Oh, uh, the Al-Qaeda's. The, the, the Al-Qaeda's, yeah. <laughs> The Al Qaeda's have actually elected a new leader. Yeah. yeah. Who is this? Do we know? It's a man called Al Zawahiri. Ayman are... Al Zawahiri. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Zawahiri. feel free to get the correct pronunciation. It's that bloke. Yeah, that bloke. <laughs> Do you, if you'd just been made head of Al Qaeda, would you send out a press statement going, "I've become head of Al Qaeda"? If I was <laughs> become head of Al, I'd keep it quiet. <laughs> I just hope people found out. I didn't think it was like, Al Zawahiri is delighted to announce his new role as head of Al-Qaeda. It's exciting to bring Al-Qaeda through this difficult transitional time. <laughs> <laughs> 
great new challenges ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Please ignore the dent in the middle of his head. That is... <laughs> Okay. He's also sent off for the uh, one a month collection of classics from the Reader's Digest. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he turned 60 on Sunday. It's, uh, this, I was reading in the, in the Guardian, he turned 60 on Sunday, but he didn't celebrate. <laughs> I bet he didn't celebrate. Can you think of anything more mm. stressful than an Al Qaeda birthday party? Every time they're opening a package. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Big trimmers, they again. <laughs> They said, in the article I read, they said he is a cold, joyless man. You thought, oh, that's a surprise. I thought he was a kind of happy-go-lucky wine lover. <laughs> wine lover. He liked a game of hide-and-seek. I'm just really bored with his whole Al-Qaeda thing. I think it's just very exaggerated, and it just sort of motivates Islamophobia, and it's pretty disgusting how it is today. And I was with my friend, actually, a Muslim woman, she wears the hijab. And this is just, she was telling me, she gets harassed in the street. Like, people, the way people treat Muslims is disgusting. We're standing at the taxi rank, minding our own business. This woman, we don't even know, just shouts across the road, Oi, you! And we're like, what? And she runs over and she points in my friend's face and she goes, You! You say sorry for 9-11 now! Say sorry for 9-11 now! And I was so shocked. I just looked at my friend and I was like, oh, my God, was that you? <laughs> <laughs> Which international figure has taken to tweeting in the last week? Uh, Barack Obama has yep. taken to tweeting. He apparently has the third most followers in the world yes. after Lady Gaga <laughs> and Justin Bieber, which is why the world must end. <laughs> 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 I mean, I know Justin Bieber isn't for me, right? But it does seem to me slightly wrong to have eight-year-olds lusting after some 16-year-old kid or whatever, isn't it? It does seem strange. He's there singing all about love, isn't he, yeah. to people who can't possibly know anything about love. It would be like having some 16-year-olds lusting after a 32-year-old as he sung about dentures, retirement and surgical <laughs> stockings. That would be creepy. And, and, by the way, Justin Bieber is 17 and a half. <laughs> But on Twitter, we uh, mentioned last week... Uh, I'm on Twitter, as I think a lot of people here. The, uh, I mentioned last week about the exam invigilators game that they play, where invigilators would entertain themselves by standing... You know, they go, I'll stand next to the ugliest person in the room, and then walk down and just stand and go... Like that. <laughs> I forgot when telling that story that we're right in the middle of state exams in both the UK and Ireland. And I've seen <laughs> hundreds of tweets of people going, I was in the middle of my exam today, and the bloke just stood beside me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. It's really upsetting. Like, and then hundreds of other tweets from invigilators going, Oh, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. We play Pac Man. <laughs> So one of them is Pac-Man, and they'd go on, on, and the others chase them into a <laughs> At the end of the round, the points go to Sean, Ava and Andy! <laughs> now we come to scenes we'd like to see, so if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, please. I'll read out this week's topics, and then we'll see what our panellists can come up with. OK, here we go. The first subject is unlikely lines from a superhero film. Worry not, Procrastination Man is here. <laughs> Where is everybody? What's with all the blood? <laughs> Catwoman, what did I tell you about not shitting in next door's garden? <laughs> I am Big Society Man. I could do it for you, but I'd much rather you did it yourself. <laughs> Prepare to meet a new breed of sex change superhero in the X-Men. <laughs> yes, I do believe a man can fly, but only if he's carrying under 100 mils. <laughs> I am parking review man. <laughs> Where's my check? <laughs> Wow, Iron Man, how did you get all the creases out? <laughs> uh, just call the police. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a bird? Is it a plane? Well, if you don't know that, what the hell are you doing in air traffic control? <laughs> 
What use is a spider's web against me, Duster Man and Hoover Boy? <laughs> Batman begins! <laughs> I'm sexist, I'm racist, and I drive like an arsehole. I am White Van Man. <laughs> what do, I, do I... Should I do...? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do yeah, I, yeah, you're yeah. Doing? yeah. I, this is part of it! <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> OK, the next topic is... On likely things for a continuity announcer to say. And now to upset children everywhere, it's Pepper Pig in pepper sauce. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, oh, oh god, oh, oh, oh. and Nigella will be back at the same time next week. <laughs> <laughs> Up next, Ryan Giggs appears on Footballers Wives. Up on Channel 4, live from Switzerland, it's Come Die With Me. <laughs> and now for a special episode of Planet Earth where six chimpanzees will watch David Attenborough have sex. <laughs> <laughs> and now is the time I have to be extremely careful because the next programme is about Roald Dahl, genius behind Willy Wanker's Chop Bollocks. <laughs> Next on the History Channel, World War II in colour. Look away if you don't want to know how it ends. <laughs> Just to clear up some confusion for our regular viewers, ITV2 plus one is not the same as ITV3. <laughs> First, though, there's a serial killer on the loose in Balamori. <laughs> If you have been affected by some of the issues in EastEnders, they must have been acting it better than they usually do. <laughs> and now, Gordon Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares for the hard of hearing. You're watching the Dignitas channel. For God's sake, don't press the red button. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, it's Bargain Hunt, which is also rhyming slang for the bloke who presents it. <laughs> right now, Kate Humble's in the lambing shed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the end of that round <laughs> go to Chris, Hugh and Stuart. Yay! 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 the end of the show. This week's winners are Chris Addison, Hugh Dennis and Stuart Francis. <laughs> Commiserations to Andy Parsons, Adam Vidal and Sean Walsh. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'm Dara Breen. Good night. <laughs>